के के वाघ ओवर टू यू एंड पी जीरो एट द रेफरेंस स्टेट इन द मॉर्निंग वी हैव सीन द रेफरेंस स्टेट वी जीरो टी जीरो आई वांट टू वैल्यूज एंड यू हैव सेड दैट ट्रिपल पॉइंट इज हैविंग द वैल्यूज जीरो फॉर ए फ्लूड दैट इज अ लिक्विड बट व्हाट अबाउट गैस एट ट्रिपल पॉइंट यू एफ इज हैविंग जीरो बट यू जी इज हैविंग सम वैल्यू प्लीज एलाबोरेट ऑन दैट थैंक यू C for any fluid uh we need a reference state for reference state not for u not and s not now this has to be decided as either some pressure and temperature or some volume and temperature or something like that for water we decide this as saturated liquid at p triple point t triple point this is saturated liquid is needed because at triple point you will have three phases together f liquid g vapor and before that s solid so at triple point the three phases will have three specific volumes three energies everything will be three vs uh, vf vg and these are three states in equilibrium with each other all three states have the same pressure and temperature so there will be a us uf ug and similarly there will be an s s sf sg okay uh, out of these we select this state as the defining reference state so that is why uf at the triple point and sf at the triple point are defined to be zero just as reference values actually uh, because we generally work with uh, the liquid phase and the vapor phase at temperature and pressures higher than the triple point uh, zero is okay we generally end up with positive values but you go to your steam tables and you will notice that on page 19 you have a table 6 which is the ice and water vapor temperature base it starts with 0.01 degree c and goes up to minus 40 degree c nothing special about minus 40 it just stops there and you will notice here that this ui they have instead of s they have used the thing i you see the three uh, uh you see the two values there the values for vapor and values for ice and the values for ice are all negative but since we generally don't usually work with ice these values are okay otherwise if you really work at these low temperatures you may have used just for convenience a still lower value or define the value of uf uh, instead of uh, reference uf instead of zero to maybe 1000 just for the heck of it in which case most of these values or maybe all these values would have been positive over to you i have lost your uh, video again hello thank you sir one more question regarding the properties of fluid sir so that question is how water is a superheated steam in atmospheric air 
water as a superheated steam in atmospheric air, this question has been discussed in Moodle. The simple idea is this, unless our air is saturated and has uh, drops of dew or something in it, the vapor part is dry air and water vapor in equilibrium. The concentration of water vapor is so small that the partial pressure is of the order of uh, 0. Point, a very small fraction of the atmosphere, something like point how much, not even about of the order of 1 percent. So, uh, so about uh, less than 1 percent, maybe of the order of 0.1 percent. Okay, so, you take uh, atmospheric pressure of 1 bar, this comes to something like point less than 0 0.01 bar, it is 0 0.005 bar or of that order, maybe even less. And uh, so, the state of vapor out there is temperature of say 30 degree or 40 degree and uh, pressure of uh, uh, um, a small fraction, very small fraction of a bar. And if you look up the steam tables, that turns out to be superheated steam. It will be saturated uh, dry, you can say it is dry saturated vapor only when the relative humidity is 100 percent. If the relative humidity is less than 100 percent, it will be superheated steam. Over to you. My question, uh, this uh, previous question that UF and BF, SF all are assumed as a reference state as you have said, but what about UG? Uh, I want to know at triple point how they have calculated UG as a value 2375 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. Notice that out of this only two are defined as reference, VF and SF. VF is measured out and so is UG measured out. Actually, UG is not directly measured. You first measure the latent heat HFG at that pressure and from and then separately you measure VG and from HFG and VG and the pressure being known, you determine the uh, uh, UG. Same thing is true of HG. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Over and out. Thank you very much. Yashwantrao Chavan College, Nagpur, over to you. Good afternoon, sir. My question is, how entropy concept is useful in our day-to-day -day life? Or, and one more, sir, what are the practical applications of entropy? Over, over to you, sir. Thank you. In our daily life, Entropy concept need not be involved at all, need not be invoked at all. In our daily life, we have a feel for what is happening and what is not happening. That natural feel all of us have. Entropy is only a way of technically formulating it. So, that is about day to day life. Okay, we do not have to, people go through daily life, do excellent work. Uh, become prime ministers of our country. I do not think um, Dr. Manmohan Singh has to worry about entropy at all. He may not even have come across the word entropy in his whole life. There is just no need. Okay. Now, in the technical world, Entropy is very useful because that allow us to design and analyze machines like turbines, compressors, nozzles, aircraft propellers, um, rocket nozzles and all sorts of things. Okay. And tomorrow morning when you see open systems. Uh, actually, you will find that uh, 
we do not have that much of a feel for open systems that we generally have for closed systems. So, in open systems the second law and the entropy will uh, really be really be very active and uh, there is a major parameter for turbines, compressors etcetera, which is isentropic efficiency, not a cycle efficiency, it is a process efficiency and that will be defined tomorrow morning when we consider the uh, first law and second law for open thermodynamic systems and uh, at that time you will start appreciating what entropy is. Over to you. Over and out sir. NIT Calicut, over to you. Second law of thermodynamics, the tutorial 4.9, sir how do we calculate the change in the entropy of the universe? 4.9. Page number nine, uh, page number eight. How do we calculate the change of entropy of the universe? Tutorial, page number eight, question number four point nine. Yeah. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Your question is about SL nine. The last question on page eight. 1 kg of an ideal gas at 12 bar 500 k is must one mixed with 1 kg of the same gas at 5 bar 300 k. The mixing takes place at constant volume. During the process, the system rejects some heat to the environment, which remains constant at 300 k. Gas properties are specified, determine final state, temperature, volume, pressure. Uh, and uh, change in entropy of the universe. Okay. Let us formulate the problem. You have a constant volume chamber initially in two parts. Let us consider uh, one has 1 kg at 12 bar 500 k and one has 1 kg of the same gas at 5, 5 bar 300 k. So, uh, let us, I do not know what exactly the relative volume will be. Here the pressure is two and a half, almost two and a half times higher, but the temperature is slightly less than two times higher. So, let us say that, let us not worry about sketching it to scale. Let us say this is, this is part A, this is part B and this is 1 kg, this is also 1 kg. And let us say the initial state here is P 1, T 1 and because it is P 1, T 1, you can determine what is V 1. This is P 2, T 2 and you can determine what is V 2. Remember the relative molecular mass that is molecular weight of 32 is given. So, the R for uh, this is the universal gas constant divided by 32. This is in kilo joule per kilogram Kelvin, 32 will be in uh, sorry this is k mole Kelvin, whereas this is uh, kg per k mole and hence you will get R in terms of kilo joule per kg Kelvin. And using that R, you can determine because P 1 V 1 is M A R T 1 and uh, P 2 V 2 is M B R T 2. So, you can determine V 1 and V 2. Okay. The You can show the process as follows. If you take a P a V diagram, there will be some initial state 1 of one part, some final state, initial state 2 of some other part, but finally they will have to come to some uniform pressure, some uniform temperature and some uniform volume. Let us say that state is 3. 
and since it is going to be a totally non quasi static process, we can just show them by two dotted lines, need not be straight, need not be crooked, you will just sketch the way you feel like. Okay. You cannot do anything better than this in uh, sketching the process diagram, except perhaps that you can uh, uh, either select P and small v that is specific volume or uh, P and capital V and you can maybe make it more uh, to scale on any type of diagram. Okay. So, now here process is uh, W equals 0, Y first is uh, rigid container constant volume that uh, suppresses any expansion work. Two, we will assume that W other is 0 because there is no mention of a stirrer or an electric heating, but there is some amount of heat absorption and it rejects it to the environment which is at 300 K and that means this Q is minus 150 kilo joule, this Q has been specified. Now, the first law is going to be delta E, first law will be delta E is Q minus W, W anyway is 0 and we will assume it to be stationary. So, we will assume delta E to be delta U, this is assumption again. So, delta U is Q, Q is given and delta U will be written down in two parts. delta u will be delta u of part A plus delta u of part B. And since we, we are asked to, uh, it is not asked, but we will assume air to be an ideal gas with constant C p C v and we have R, we have not air, the gas. We have R, we have gamma. So, from R and gamma, we can determine C p and C v, because R is C p minus C v and gamma is C p divided by C v. Okay. And so, we know C p, we know C v, in particular we will need C v. This is and because it is ideal gas, delta u will be m into C v into delta t. So, this will be mass of A C V which is common T 3 minus T 1 that is the temperature change for A plus mass of B C V of uh, B which is just C V T 3 minus T 2. So, this will be equal to Q because delta U is equal to Q that is what we saw on the in uh, as the application of first law. Q is specified. So, this is specified, the only unknown here remains T 3. Which now we can obtain. The moment you obtain T 3, uh, you know the final uh, temperature, you know the final volume. V 3 is going to be volume of 1 plus volume of 2. M 3 is going to be mass of A plus mass of B. So, since you know T, since you know V and since you know M, this gives you P 3, the final pressure. Okay. And uh, also the final pressure and final specific volume and final temperature. Delta S of the system is going to be delta S of part A plus delta S of part B. We write this as two parts here as well as here, but that is only for convenience. In the final part, whatever is in state 3 is considered to be essentially the same. So, you can just imagine a partition in between 
1 kg on this side and 1 kg on that side, that is just for modeling purposes. So, delta S A plus delta S B and since we know the initial and final state, delta S A can be calculated, delta S B can be calculated. Now, for the uh, reservoir, you can determine delta S reservoir as Q reservoir, which will be negative of that 150, it will absorb plus 150 kilo joule divided by temperature of the reservoir. And then change in entropy of the universe will be change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of the reservoir. Over to you. Thank you very much. Thank sir, sir uh, delta S A is uh, calculated using M C V L N P F by P 1 plus M R Ln Vf by V1. Am I right? Delta S. The question is delta S for an ideal gas. You consider uh, let us say P V and uh, the initial state 1, final state 2. So, delta S, a simple way is to calculate like this. This is V 1, this is V 2, this is P 1, this is P 2, naturally this will be T 1, this will be T 2 and at this point, where the pressure is P 1, but the volume is V 2, let us say the temperature is T 3. So, delta S 1 2 is S 2 minus S 1, let us take specific entropies, which is S 2 minus S 3 plus S 3 minus S 1 and uh, S 2 minus S 3 will be calculated as, because it is a constant volume process, it will be C V L N T 2 by T 3. And since this is a constant pressure process, this will be C P L N uh, T 3 by T 1. And because this is a constant uh, T 2 to T 3, sorry 2 to 3 or 3 to 2 is a constant uh, uh, volume process, temperature ratio will be proportional to pressure ratio. So, this will be C V L n P 2 by P 1, because P 3 is P 1 plus C P L n T 3 by T 1 will be V 3 by V 1, which is V 2 by V 1. This is one method by considering a constant pressure and constant volume process, either derive it using a constant temperature and constant uh, volume process or constant temperature and a constant pressure process and you will get slightly different formulae. Any one of those three is good enough, you can derive it according to your convenience. Over to you. Thank you very much. PhD Coimbatore, over to you. Sir, I am from PhD College of Technology, my name is Babu. So, my question is, so what is the third law of thermodynamics sir? Can you explain the third law of thermodynamics? Um, next one is, so what is the absolute enthalpy and the absolute entropy? So what is the absolute uh, temperatures? So these things uh, I need the clarifications. So other one question is, so we have the lot of basic assumption, assumption. Okay, in thermodynamics we have the lot of basic assumptions. Then how we correlate the real systems? This, this is the question. Over to you. Uh, your first question is what is the third law of thermodynamics? In mechanical engineering thermodynamics, we do not have to discuss or even talk about the third law of thermodynamics. Third law of thermodynamics is something which is used by physicists and material scientists who work with solid state physics and crystals. They define third law or they 
state third law as the entropy of a pure crystal, perfect crystal at 0 Kelvin is 0. That way they are just defining a convenient reference point for entropy. We do not have to worry anything, worry about anything like that. So, that is why in this course we are not talking about the third law of thermodynamics at all. Uh, the second part was what is absolute enthalpy, absolute uh, entropy and absolute temperature. There is no first let us come to temperature, there is no such thing as absolute temperature, there is only a thermodynamic scale of temperature and the ideal gas scale of temperature and earlier than that there will be many, many, there were many, many empirical scales of temperature like Celsius, Fahrenheit, humor. any one of us could uh, define a scale of temperature, even now we can define any scale of temperature that we, that we feel like, but others will not accept it unless it, there has to be shown, we have, we show some convenience in using it and directly link it to the Kelvin scale because it is established that Kelvin scale is a, uh, has a thermodynamic basis. So, unless everything is anything, any other scale is directly related to Kelvin scale, there is no point in defining a scale of temperature. So, in the, in a crude way you can say the Kelvin scale is an absolute scale of temperature, but there is no nothing absolute about it. It is only one of many thermodynamic temperature scales but it is a standardized thermodynamic temperature scale. So, everybody tabulates data using Kelvin scale. Now, there is no such thing as an absolute value of enthalpy, internal energy and entropy. So, I do not know where you came across this term as absolute enthalpy and absolute entropy etcetera. Over. Sir, another question. Uh, in the properties, we have intensive property and extensive property. For extensive property, we are using uppercase letter. Some exceptional case for mass, we are using small uh, lower case. And in, if you take intensive property, right, we will be using a lower case letter. And some exceptional case, say for example, temperature, we are using capital, sorry, uppercase. Is there any rule for uh, intensive property and extensive property should be denoted by a lower case letter? Over to you, sir. There is uh, no such rule about uh, uh, extensive and intensive properties. Uh, if you look at the extensive properties like mass, I can use capital or small m, it does not matter, but usually the h, u, s, etcetera are written capital, but I can, I know at least one textbook in which small letters is extensive and capital letters is extensive. Okay. Sorry, small letter is uh, extensive and capital letter is intensive. Now, among intensive properties, essentially we are looking at only two intensive properties, temperature and pressure. Okay. The other intensive properties, H, uh, uh, U, S and V are made intensive by creating specific properties. These are specific properties, but for a system in equilibrium, they will be intensive properties. The mass divided by mass does not give you anything. So, there is no uh, specific uh, property related to mass, but reciprocal of uh, specific volume that is mass per unit volume is density which also is some sort of a specific property and intensive property. Regarding pressure, why pressure is lower case, I do not know, when we live with the upper, upper case. Uh, temperature is usually written in capital T, because small t we will soon have to use tomorrow for uh, time. So, we need time and we need temperature, both begin with a t. So, for convenience, one is given uh, capital letter, one is given lower letter. And since uh, school books and mechanics books usually use lower case T for time, 
we continue to use lower case t for time and upper case t for temperature. Okay, that is about it. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Another question. Uh, in uh, temperature entropy diagram, say for example, water as a substance, if it is in a liquid state between two constant pressure line, work input it will be less. But if the same water, if it is in a vapor state, for the same constant pressure, work input it will be more. Uh, whether it is correct or wrong, sir. Over to you, sir. I, I do not understand just by looking at a temperature entropy diagram, how can you determine the work input? What is the process that you are going to consider? Over to you. Isentropic process. Okay. If you are looking at an isentropic process, then the work done in any open system process or in an isentropic process will depend on the see in an open system process it will depend on the enthalpy difference and the enthalpy difference depends not only on the temperature difference but on other aspects also for example in the liquid part the specific volume is very low whereas in the vapor part specific volume is pretty large since in the liquid uh, specific volume is very low a change in uh, a small change in uh, or a, a, a specified change in pressure does not lead to uh, any significant enthalpy difference, significant addition to enthalpy difference apart from delta u. And also delta u also changes, but that uh, large specific volume for vapor uh, leads to reasonably large enthalpy differences of vapor. That is why larger work needs to be put in to compress a vapor, but similarly large work can be expanded, uh, ex, uh, extracted from a vapor. Over. Thank you, sir. Over and out. NIT Calicut, over to you. Could you please explain the significance of Gibbs function, Helmholtz function and Maxwell relations rather than the properties relation. Explain the physical significance of its function, Thermal's function and the maximum relations. Okay. The uh, request from uh, NIT Calicut is the physical function of uh, physical significance of Helmholtz function A. Gibbs function G and physical significance of Maxwell's relations. Uh, let me come to the last part. I do not think there is any explainable physical significance of Maxwell's relations, except that a combination of the first law and the second law of thermodynamics uh, imposes certain restrictions on the properties we saw the most visual depiction of that is that for a reversible cycle, uh, the area reversible cycle executed by a simple compressible system. Let me be more specific. The area under the area of the cycle on the P V diagram and area of the cycle on the T S diagram will be the same. Okay. Uh, and that automatically results because of this property is, uh, equation, property relations into the Maxwell's relations. So, you can say that this uh, uh, first law that represents areas and second law which also provides the meaning to the area, a combination of these is extracted as our four Maxwell's relations. Maybe that is the nearest I can come to significance. This is the significance of the Gibbs function that it is a potential the decrease in which represents the maximum work other than expansion work that can be obtained in an isobaric come isothermal process. And I was about to tell you that uh, a uh, electrochemical process as that as it takes place in the fuel cell is a 
process which is an isobaric come isothermal process, uh, no change in pressure, no change in temperature at least under ideal conditions and uh, hence uh, and it does not do even if it does an expansion work we do not extract it, it is just exposed to ambient. So, that goes in moving the uh, ambient fluid around but you extract electricity out of it or we provide electricity to the fuel cell to charge it. So, that is a uh, situation where the change in Gibbs function will decide how much work we can obtain. K. K. Vagnashik over to you. My question is regarding the entropy. <coughs> I have read uh, that entropy is a molecular disorder in one book. So, uh, can you tell about this molecular disorder, whether we should relate entropy to molecular disorder or uh, it is said that entropy of the universe is continuously increasing. Does it mean that the molecular disorder is increasing continuously? Over to you sir. This has also been discussed on the Moodle. So, I recommend that all of you keep track of the discussion on Moodle. Uh, we have derived entropy and we will be using entropy without any reference to any molecular disorder or without any reference to molecules. Ours is classical thermodynamics for us all material is a each and every piece of material is a continuum. So, we do not have to talk about molecules and we will not talk about molecules. Uh, many physicists and chemists have to uh, or the uh, have uh, tendency to talk about molecular disorder, but finally uh, when it comes to actual computation they do not do any disorderly computations, they do computation very similar to ours, okay. but they talk about molecular disorder. The disorder directly is not measured, it is only an indirect uh, representation of something else which is happening. Okay. And second thing is when you talk of a universe. Remember our thermodynamic universe is a well defined adiabatic system. If you are talking of the universe as our physical universe or our astronomical universe, the first um, situation that we confront is no astronomer, no physicist, no one knows what are the boundaries of our physical universe. And if we cannot define the boundaries, we cannot define the system. And if we cannot define the boundaries, we do not know whether our system is adiabatic or not. So, we cannot say whether the entropy of the physical universe is increasing or not. So, there is no question of arguing in that direction at all. Over to you. In equation of state for an ideal gas, uh, you have not talked about Van der Waals equation. Just I want to know something about Van der Waals equation, how it has come. Thank you. See, uh, Van der Waals equation of state is not for an ideal gas. Uh, Van der Waals equation of state is a model of a gas which is not ideal and uh, the importance of Van der Waals equation of state is that it is perhaps the simplest equation which shows the existence of a critical point. It is only from that point of view that the Van der Waals equation is important. Another uh, reason for everybody to fall in love with the Van der Waals equation of state is that it is not very difficult to manipulate mathematically. It is a cubic in uh, volume, but it is linear in pressure and linear in temperature. That is why we can do lots of calculations with it. Okay. That is the only reason. Uh, why Van der Waals gas equation is uh, popular. Uh, that P plus A by V squared and V minus B is claimed to represent uh, A by V squared represents molecular attraction and the B represents molecular volume. That is only a model. These are corrections to the ideal gas equation of state which is P into V equals R T to um, uh, hoping to be able to take care of molecular attraction and molecular volume. It does not do complete justice to it, uh, because we know that it is not an uh, exact fit for almost any gas. Gases like hydrogen and helium, which have uh, 
slight deviations or a small deviation from uh, the ideal gas law. For them it can be used, but that can be used only in uh, small ranges, not over a very wide range of state space. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Over and out. VNIT, over to you. If the heat transfer due to factors causing irreversibility is given in addition to the direct heat transfer Q, then will we be now able to represent such irreversible process by a definite curve on the TS diagram? The one thing I do not understand, what do you mean by the causes of Q which is, uh, which causes irreversibility? That is something which is uh, not understandable by me. Uh, uh, for Q, it is very simple. If the uh, donor system, see Q is an interaction, so there should be a donor system and a recipient system. Uh, if the donor system is in equilibrium, recipient system is also is in equilibrium in its own right, then uh, the Q can be considered to be a reversible Q only if the temperature difference between them is 0. If the temperature dif difference between them is not 0, then naturally that heat transfer process at least that dq across the finite temperature difference is not does not lead to a reversible process and uh, uh, remember that a reversible process is not really representable on a, on paper except as a line but a line represents any quasi static process so, just because we are able to show a locus does not mean it is reversible. For example, you have a, a st stirring and expansion of a fluid say at uh, uh, constant pressure or stirring and heating of a fluid at constant volume. Uh, if the stirring is slow enough, you know a very patient stirring, then that is uh, a quasi static process very well represented on the uh, state space PV diagram, TS diagram, whatever you choose, but it is nowhere near reversible. So, you have a representation, but the process is not reversible. We should not be under the impression that just because a process is nicely shown on the uh, state space by a continuous curve, it is likely to be reversible, far from it. A reversible process is a very, very special process uh, and there is no special representation of that uh, in the state space. Over. Okay. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Okay. That uh, brings us to the end of day number 6.